Sunday day three at BGG Con. Helen and I are in the BGG Game Library. We are on the hunt for grill games. So we're going to show you the ones that we found. Grill games in the BGG Library that we are aware of. First we have Seven Continent, the Kickstarter that has gotten hugely popular. It's a narrative tile exploration game. It's got persistence so you can save where you're at. Yeah, it got a lot of fog of war kind of situation because you don't know what you're going to find every time you leave. That's Seventh Continent. The next game we found is Glory to Rome. And this is a card based city building game and a unique mechanic is that the cards are multi-use. Uh, which I think was new <laughs> back in the day. The spiritual successor of this is Matai and I, but people who are connoisseurs of Carl Chudik games suggest that this game is far superior to Matai and I in just its elegance and simplicity. Glory to Rome. Palace of Zakara. This game you can get still, but only in the German version. This is the English copy we, we see, and I believe there's only, I think, a super limited print run of about 500 copies that was ever printed by Z-Man in the English language. So you can still get it, but in a foreign language, and this English copy is considered a grail game. Next we have Starfarers of Catan. Uh, although it bears the Catan name, it's a more of an exploration light 4X game. Printed by Manfred Games with uh, no recollection that it's going to be reprinted at this point and highly sought after, especially because it was one of the first games that involved interesting bits. It had lots of little plastic bits in it. Next we have Bruges, a Stefan Feld game, his usual point salad. In this game we're 15th century merchants building up the city of Bruges. Uh, it has an interesting dice rolling combined with card drafting mechanic. Uh, the cards are somewhat multi-use uh, in that you have to put them down in the buildings and you're trying to race to get it done before disasters strike. So that's Bruges by Stefan Feld. Next girl game is 10 Days, the 10 Days series basically. 10 Days in Asia, 10 Days in Europe, Europe and, and Africa. Africa. They also have 10 Days in USA in the library. Um, but these ones are the harder to get ones. They are. These are simple route building games. Uh, you're spending 10 days, you're setting up your travel plans. I played this game last week. It was so fun. It's so simple. Yeah. Every turn you literally draw a card yeah. or this card a card. Yeah. And you're trying to plan so routes that connect. Simple. Very, very simple. It's great. 10 Days in USA currently available, but they have other places that you can explore. King Gopolis is our next grill game. We found the BGG library. This game has been requested for a reprint for quite a while, at least by me. <laughs> so in Ginkopolis, you're trying to build the city, uh, both horizontally, which is outward this way, and vertically, which is building on top of each piece and building it up. So a three-dimensional tiling city building game, Gangopolis. The next girl game we found is War of the Ring, and this is the second edition, but they also have the Grail Collector's Edition in the BGG library. Uh, this game is a one versus many, where you one player plays Sauron and controls the evil hordes, while the remaining players play the heroes in J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings series, attempting to destroy the ring and bring peace and prosperity back to Middle Earth. That is War of the Ring. Collector's Edition. Collector's Edition, in particular. The next set of Grail games we found were the Splatter games. The Great Zimbabwe Bus and Antiquity. So Slaughter Game is a publisher who creates these very, very well-designed tight games. More on the Euro and Brain Journey side. Um, but because they're a small publisher, every time they do a print run, it's very limited and it's in small quantities. And they don't don't they don't do it very often. So therefore, these games are highly seeked after. And I personally <laughs> want to get my hands on the Great Zimbabwe. One of the ones that they're very well known for is Fuchi Manning. Yes. Uh, which is, I believe, currently available. So it's they are going, going out of print now. Right. So they are running through the last remaining copies of Food Chain Magnet. After that, who knows when they'll reprint it. So if you want it, get it while you can. The next growl game is Catan Collector's Edition. This is the 3D Collector's Edition that's probably running about two, three thousand dollars on the resale market. These are super cool. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and these are chunky, chunky pieces. 
There's the field, the grain. He's at the edges of the board. Oh. Each player's pieces are also three-dimensional. Do they come pre-painted? Yeah. Wow. This one, right? Last but not least, the grail grain is Magic Realm. Magic Realm is a game from 1979. It is probably the most complicated game ever made. And actually, if we show you what's inside, there's a curious little note we found inside. So we found that there are four people who decided to leave a note saying that they tried. They played it for four days. They tried, but they were not able to understand the game. So this is probably compared to uh, Mage Knight quite a bit, the board game. Um, it's a fantasy-based adventuring game. As you can see in the box, there's a gazillion tokens. These hex tiles that look a lot like Mage Knight. And I do want to mention that this looks like a homemade copy, like a self-printed copy. Um, the files are on BGG if you want to print it yourself. And wow, it's a very well-made copy. That's the player aids. Yeah, it is. It is a complex, complex game. I think part of it is also that the rules were terribly written. Uh, but for 1979, it's probably slightly expected. So this person once again did an excellent job printing these on cardstock. Cardboard, actually. Nice chipboard. Oh, we even have little treasure cards. Wow. Tiny. It's tiny. Yeah, Those spell cards. Tiny. Wow. Oh my gosh. Are those characters? Yeah, these are these are characters, uh, and they're actually on plastic cards. It's amazing. It's super beautiful. <laughs> and look how cute the cards are. They're tiny. Belt of Strength. The Regent of Jewels. Glimmering Ring. The Garb of Speed. So those are the spell cards. Treasure cards, sorry. excuse me. What else do we have in there? Oh, it just keeps going, my goodness. Confrontation chart. Just for movement, there is a whole Pack. page of tables. And the whole page of tables combats, magic, oh monsters, natives. Amazing. Yep. Yep, there's a lot there's a lot to this game. And the bottom is just cardboard, Helen? Oh nope. It's yep. board. It's, it's a game board. Now we're getting into game boards. Chart of Bounty, Confrontation, more Confrontation charts. The Chart of Appearances. Chart of Appearances. More Confrontation charts. Lots of Confrontation charts. Ooh. Wait, what is the Confrontation chart? Why are there so many of them? Maybe they go to each character? Like each monster? Ah, we finally found the rules. Version 3.2 Alpha. The rules of Magic Round. Double sided. Uh, yeah, it's font 11. And it is 169 pages. And that is the Grail game from 1979 Magic Realm. Just, just go play Mage Knight. It plays from 1 to 16 players, that's why there's so many. And these are the Grail games that we found in the BGG library. <clears throat> Grail games that we know are in the library, but are so popular they are currently checked out, include Dune, the 1970s game that recreates Frank Herbert's universe incredibly well. The other one uh, that is here and always checked out is Star Wars Queen's Gambit, the space 3D space combat game based on the Phantom Menace.
if you want to play them. The next BGG Con is this fall, November 20th to 24th in Dallas, Texas.